So you have a test coming up Monday, July 2nd. It's one hour and 20 minutes long. You can take it at 6.15 or 6.30 in the morning. I had both times in the email. Either one's okay. Or you can take it at 3.30 in the afternoon or 5.30 in the afternoon. The test covers the sections that you see here. They're the sections that we have on WebAssign. Um, you have an hour and 20 minutes to take the exam. No notes are allowed. That's because this is a prerequisite for a future class where you more than likely will not be able to use notes. So you are not allowed to use notes here either. You're supposed to memorize the material that you'll need in future classes. So some reminders to memorize the quadratic formula and then the difference of two cubes formula and the sum of two cubes formula and the difference of squares formula. The sum and difference of cubes formulas only differ by a minus sign. So the a cubed minus b cubed has its minus sign here, but a plus sign here. Whereas the a cubed plus b cubed has a positive sign first, and then the minus sign is in this position. So each formula only has one minus sign. You can certainly bring a calculator. In fact, you should bring a calculator, but not a graphing calculator. When you look at the exam, there'll be some general instructions on the top. It will say simplify completely. So that means things like taking the square root of 12 and writing it as 2 times the square root of 3. So taking a fraction and reducing it. So here's a rational expression like you'll have in section 8.8, .8, and you would reduce that completely. So here you can factor x out of the denominator and then divide the x away. And so a simplified form would be 2 divided by x minus 3. The exam will also say find exact answers when possible. For example, the 2 square roots of 3 is the exact answer. If you put that in your graphing in your calculator and got a decimal, the decimal would be rounded off. It would not be exact. Just like with fractions, 2 thirds is exact. However, if you put 2 thirds in your calculator, you'd get 0.6667 and then you'd have to round that off. That is not exact. That would be an approximation. The test will also say show your work if you have the correct answer, but do not have work indicating how you arrived at that answer. You may not receive full credit. You are being graded on your work. That's what most of the points will be. There's 16 problems on the test. I think I forgot to write that down. 16 or 17 problems. One of those problems you'll need to solve by completing a square, and then the instructions will say that. So there's only one problem that you have to use the completing the square method on, but to get full credit, you do need to use completing the square on that problem. Um, if you are taking the test on campus, you can bring a self-addressed stamped envelope, and then I'll return your exam to you that way. Otherwise, you can pick it up when you come to campus for the next test. It's up to you. So take a look at the review. The review is not required. It's an optional, um, an optional homework assignment. It's not counted towards your grade, but you can look at the review and practice problems from each, each of these sections. And then if you're having problems in the review on any of those problems, you should go back to the homework on those and practice more because you need to be able to do all of those problems without any helps or hints or notes to do well on the test. So with 16 or 17 problems, each problem between five and eight points, and you want to get all those right that you can. There is partial credit, so if, if you start a problem out correctly, then you can still get some partial credit, but you do have to start a problem correctly to get partial credit. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.